Alila, why aren't felons allowed to vote but can run for president? You know, <laughs> I, uh, I, do, I have a theory about that, but I think the best answer is that it is the air bud rule where there's no law that says a, president, uh, a felon can't run for president. I believe our founders probably assumed that uh, the American people would never want to vote for a felon. So, you know, uh, yeah, you know, I, I have a theory about it that I have not explored. I'm kind of, I'm kind of, you know, shooting from the hip today, but, uh, uh, I'm wondering, you know, because there are connections that we know, racist connections that we know between criminal justice, um, policy in this country, um, and, uh, you know, the way that the way that people in the South felt about black people and, you know, taking away the rights of felons to vote and then heavily uh, policing black neighborhoods seems like a method of getting black people to stop voting. And, you know, I believe that those same races probably didn't think we'd ever have a black president. And so they thought that, uh, yeah, they didn't have to include that provision because they were just trying to keep black people from voting. So, you know, uh, that's a theory that I just came up with right now. So, you know, you can fact check me if you like, but I, I just, it just popped into my noodle there. Uh, but thank you very much for your question, Leela. Alex Boltz, odds the filibuster gets eliminated. Um, you know, it would be easy if we just vote for senators who are amenable to eliminating the filibuster. I don't really like to do the percentage game or or make predictions. I just say, like, work towards the goal that you wish to accomplish. So I want to get rid of the filibuster, so I only vote for politicians who are anti-filibuster, and if that's, and, you know, and I do work for those politicians. I knock on doors, and I make phone calls, and I donate to them. So, yeah, if that's something that you care about, too, then that's uh, some work that you can do. Uh, won't bow 2.1. Why are all of Kamala's comments on her own YouTube page negative? YouTube, uh, they, they have a more right-wing audience, you know? I put my content on there all the time, and I think that is the platform that I get the most right-wing hate from by far. Uh, let's see here. Sasquatch9999. I'm alarmed by how hateful Republicans have become. I mean, that's, that's the path that they have been on for a very long time. I have been keyed into politics since the early 2000s, and I have just watched a slow decline into madness. And, you know, I don't, I'm not a, a history buff, but everything that I've learned about politics from the 90s and the 80s, it seems like that's, you know, that's always where it was going. And I just listened to this podcast called Ultra about uh, the uh, Nazis living in America during World War II and just after World War II. And it, seem, it seems like it's already, it seems like this is just a, a seed that was planted in the 1940s that is now blooming, but... You know, that's a little conjecture on my part. If you want more, check out the podcast. It's called Ultra. I highly recommend it. Uh, Emily Kathleen. Hi, Jarrett. You talked about ranked choice voting a few times now. Can you explain what it is? Sure thing, Emily. Uh, ranked choice voting is basically instead of voting for one of two people, uh, you can vote for as many people as you like. And, you know, it's an attempt to get rid of the spoiler effect of having more than two candidates. So, for example, if, you know, our candidates are... Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump, and you like Bernie Sanders better, but you're worried that Sanders won't beat Trump and that more people are going to vote for Hillary Clinton, so you vote for Hillary Clinton instead. Ranked choice voting gives you the option of voting. Your number one pick is Bernie Sanders, your number two pick is Hillary Clinton, and you don't vote at all for Donald Trump because you don't want to get him those points. I'm not 100% on what the mechanism is by which they take all that, all those votes and turn them into a, you know... A decision, we you know we had ranked choice voting for the mayor in New York in 2021 and 2022. And uh, yeah, you know, I, uh, you know, I, I voted for Maya Wiley. She was my number one choice, but then she didn't get picked. And then I, I don't know if uh, I, I believe that Eric Adams did not win in the first sort of like collection of votes. I believe that he, you know, they had to wait to sort of like go into everybody's second choice for him to actually win. C.J. Smolensky, how do we deal with globalization, especially with the rise of Chinese power? Um, I mean, it's interesting. Uh, there's a bunch of different ways that you can talk about globalization. There's like a cultural globalization where 
I studied in London in 1999, and then I went back to visit in 2013, and it stopped, and there are certain parts of the city that stopped looking like they were London and just started looking like they were any city. And, you know, that's kind of a cultural aesthetic bummer, you know, but uh, as far as like, you know, the globalization of the planet is, it's just happening. You know, we, we are more connected than we have ever been, and companies are more inculcated in other countries than they've ever been before. So, you know, I'm sure that there are some things that we can do a soft hand that we can put on our markets in order to sort of like incentivize more uh, American manufacturing and stuff like that. But, but living in a global world is something that we are careening towards. And so I think it's better to think about not stopping that, but just figuring out the policies that are going to make that transition fair and beneficial to everybody. T-Politics, the Inflation Reduction Act by Biden-Harris administration, please. Do you want me to talk about it? Uh, T-Politics also asks, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. I'm feeling all right. I'm glad it's Thursday. Uh, Yeah, the Inflation Reduction Act is an incredible piece of legislation that helped reduce inflation. Uh, We had a, you know, a, a massive spike, an unprecedented spike in inflation after COVID, because COVID fucked up all, all our supply chains. Thank you very much, Trump administration, for dropping the ball so hard on that that caused that. Uh, and it took a really long time for that inflation to come down, but that is, was in help due to the uh, Fed raising interest rates and also uh, some of the financial elements of the Inflation Reduction Act. But I think the most impressive and influential part of the Inflation Reduction Act is the massive um, investment in transitioning to a renewable energy grid. It's the largest investment in green technology in our nation's history. Uh, And everybody who reports on it is like, it is an incredible piece of legislation that is doing wonderful things. And we just need a president who is not going to get in the way of those things continuing in 2025. And that's part of the reason why I advocate voting for Democrats. Uh, Foxy Yoda, if you think either side is righteous, you're not informed. Well, maybe you're not informed, Foxy Yoda. You should maybe consider that as a possibility. Uh, Bearded Buck, 96, I heard you say something about felons voting, and you think that's a good or a bad thing. Um, you know, I'm a little, I'm a little agnostic about the idea of felons voting, but if somebody is, has, has served their time, and they have repaid their debt to society, and they are a former felon, then I'm not really sure why they need to not be able to vote ever again, you know? Um, I'm also, you know, I'm not too concerned with felons voting because, you know, I'm, I'm, (laughs) I don't know how much political sway that, that uh, constituency holds, but, you know, I'm not trying to, that is, it is a pretty aggressive policy proposition to have current felons voting. So I'm not going to back that, but I will say that I, you know, (laughs) I am, I, I would be open to a an argument in favor of that or against that, you know, like I said. I am Ava. Why are LGBTQ a target for Republicans? The way that Republicans try to get political power is by otherizing other groups. The Democratic Party is a rainbow coalition. It's made up of every different kind of American that there is, men, women, straight, gay, black, white, etc. But the Republicans are largely a monolith. Yes, there are black people and gay people in the Republican Party, but they are mainly the party of white people and more specifically white men. And the way that they hold that coalition together is by saying that all those other groups that aren't us, they're weird, they're different. Uh, they are trying to change your way of life and it's weird and, and uh, you know. And so, you know, maybe if you vote for us, we can put a stop to that weirdness and just have this country be the way that it was for a long time, which is just just for people like us, you know? Wasn't that great? Wasn't that great? Bennett, two, three. First, he fired the pandemic response team. That is true. Trump did fire the pandemic response team. Uh, Titan 2K, sounds like you're biased towards Democrats. I'm not biased. I have taken in information, and that has colored my opinion. You know, I like the platform of the Democratic Party. I don't like the platform of the Republican Party, but it has nothing to do with bias. There's nothing, it's not like, oh, I just like donkeys better, and so I'm going to support the Democrats. I, I'll support the Democrats no matter what their policies are. No, that's not, that's not what I am. That would be bias, if, is if you don't care what the substance is and you only care for the, uh, you know, superficial. Uh, Rohan says, uh, why don't Trump supporters acknowledge the inflation levels around the world in comparison to the U.S.? Because it doesn't serve them to acknowledge it. Uh, what I have found is that there is a strain of the Republican Party that are only interested in owning the libs 
and in trolling. And so even though they know certain things to be false, they will still push false narratives because they have an agenda. And uh, yeah, you know, I have I have my reasons to not, I, I don't trust <laughs> Republican politicians. I've caught them in too many lies. You know, global warming, trickle down economics, gun control. Like, I know they're full of shit. So I, I have already discounted the things that they say. Yuria, what are your thoughts on gun laws? We should have more because there's a lot of gun deaths in this country. Uh, you know, people that are very keen on keeping their guns. I am amenable to that, even though I don't care for them myself. But maybe let's have some laws to make things safer. Maybe if you want to have a gun, you should be forced to buy insurance and have a license like we do with cars. Maybe uh, mandatory safety training that you have to renew every five to ten years. Uh, maybe closing the gun show loophole so that every gun purchase is met with a background check, mandatory background check. And also red flag laws, where if somebody is found guilty of beating their spouse, maybe we take their gun away because we know that that is a step on the way to murdering your spouse with your gun. Uh, Jake McDonald, do you think we could ever move away from the broken two-party system? You know, I don't know that the two-party system is broken. That's a talking point that I hear a lot. But, uh, you know, I don't blame the two-party system for the problems that we have in this country. I blame Republicans for weaponizing the government against Democrats and the poor and marginalized communities. Uh, but, yeah, we could absolutely have other political parties, but maybe they shouldn't start with president. Maybe they should start by building some local and state support and, and you know, <laughs> building coalitions that actually get power instead of just going for these egotistical moonshots every four years where they end up being spoiler candidates. And, uh, yeah, I don't really trust any third-party candidate that has run recently. Uh, RFK, Jill Stein, they all seem like stooges to me that are trying to be spoiler candidates, so... You know, uh, but yeah, it's possible. Uh, Ferry, who are you voting for? Democrats up and down the ballot. Mary Renfor, the Democrats have lost their minds. No, they haven't, and that's not how you spell the word there. Uh, HTX713, you think the U.S. should just focus on themselves and stop paying other countries stuff? I mean, you know, the arc I tend to hear that argument from a lot of right-wing people who, who shockingly don't want to spend money on America either, and so I don't really rate that argument all that much. But I will say this, like, I think that there are good causes abroad and bad causes abroad for us to be sending our money and weapons to, you know, like, I don't think we should be sending money and weapons to Israel, but I do think we should be, should be sending uh, money and weapons to Ukraine. I think one of those wars is just, and the other one is one side is doing war crimes. Uh, <laughs> and, well, both sides are doing war crimes, technically, but uh, the only side that we're giving weapons to is doing war crimes. Uh, yeah, you know, and, you know, nations that are starving and need assistance and, uh, you know, the, one of the one of the things that's great about America is that we we do help out a lot of a lot of nations who are suffering and famines and things like that, and helping uh, eradicate diseases in other countries. And I think that that is beneficial. And the fact that we are living on a, on a globe where you know you can take a plane trip to any country, and you know, there the difference the the things that separate us are rapidly eroding and so it behooves us to make life good everywhere and not just here in the united states so you know just speaking of eradicating disease you know that's something that that pays dividends because then we don't have other pandemics that we don't you know that we don't have to deal with okay uh it doesn't help people really are weird on both sides yeah people are weird on both sides but only the elected politicians are weird on the right uh, Joyful Girl, what do you say to people who only blame mental health for school shootings? Um, I guess I would say two things. Number one, I think the guns help. You know, it would be a lot harder for them to do that with just knives. And the other thing is, well, if you are going to blame it on mental health, then maybe you need to vote for the only political party that is willing to invest in mental health care services, and that is the Democratic Party. So the same party that is always doing the argument that it's mental health are also the ones who are defunding mental health initiatives, you know, and there's a disconnect there. So at that point, if they don't really have anything to say about that, then it's clear that they're just a talking point for continuing to hold on to uh, be, be able to vote conservative and uh, not get yelled at. Bearded Buck, what are your thoughts on Trump's tax plans? Me personally, I believe uh, they will fix the economy uh, I do, well, Bucky, uh, Bearded Bucky, you're the, <laughs> Republicans are the only people that think that Trump's tax plan is a good idea. 16 Nobel winning economists have said that his plan will spike inflation and uh, increase unemployment. Uh, Goldman Sachs, which is very much not a progressive liberal organization, has said that Kamala Harris's economic plan will be better for the country. Uh, so yeah, I trust those people more. And also Trump's tax plan is trickle-down economics, and we have 
50 years of showing that triple down economics is bullshit. So, you know, uh, I think that we should probably be moving away from that. And, you know, uh, Trump would just do that. Donut Delight, will Trump pardon P. Diddy? Yes, Trump will pardon anybody who flatters him. He will pardon anybody who flatters him. I don't know if you were aware, but two of the people that Trump pardoned right before he left office in 20. In 2020, in 2020, yeah, uh, he pardoned a drug smuggler and a uh, money launderer uh, who then had to go back to jail because he beat his spouse. And he, he also pardoned a guy who was found legally liable of, of murdering a police officer. That guy also had to go back to jail because he beat his spouse. So just think about, <laughs> think about the people that Trump is going to pardon when you're thinking about uh, voting for him again. Elise says, what are your thoughts on political celebrity worship and how we can combat it on a personal level? I think that the, I mean, we all just have to mirror that activity. You know, like don't talk about politicians as though they are flawless. Recognize that they are humans and that they are trying to do their best and that some are worse than others. And I think that goes... The opposite way, like you don't want to do celebrity worship, but you don't want to demonize. You don't want to say, ah, both parties are trash. Every politician is garbage. They're all fucking liars. That stuff is also completely um, unproductive. Uh, Biff says there is no gun show loophole. There is, though. I looked it up the last time a Second Amendment person tried to pull that on me. Skoku Sonic owning guns will be a giant red tape. No thanks. Well, there should be giant red tape for a thing that can do murder. You know, there's red tape around owning a car and being able to you know, drive a car, excuse me for my burp. So why not guns? Cars have the added benefit of being a way of transporting yourself from one place to the other. The only thing that guns do is put holes in things. Uh, well-adjusted humans unite. Thank you. Thank you, Samba. I'm a part of the well-adjusted humans coalition. Do you think of Trump's tax code becoming permanent if he wins? Absolutely. And it'll get worse. It'll become even more for the rich and less for uh, everybody in the middle class and below. Kevin T, do you agree with them funding Ukraine? I absolutely do. Uh, the fact that Ukraine has not fallen to Russian is stopping that war from escalating even further because Putin does not plan on stopping with Ukraine. He's going to continue invading countries until he brings the West into a full scale uh, war. And that is terrifying because two nu nuclear powers should not go to war against each other. That's really scary, especially when you have a madman like Putin at the helm. Uh, T. Pollock says, what do you think about the $25,000 down payment for first-time home buyers? I'm for it. Uh, joyful girl, when do you think they will call the election? That is a, uh, it's a difficult choice because Georgia has started implementing uh, changes to their election laws in order to add chaos to the system. They believe that chaos will help Trump. There are a bunch of MAGA people who are in charge of elections in Georgia right now, and even the uh, Republican uh, governor and secretary of state have said that this is completely fucking bananas. Uh, so they they have mandated that they that every ballot must be hand counted um, and uh, then matched with the electronic voter rolls, which I don't have a problem with that necessarily, but the way that they've instituted it, they have made it so that they can't go forward with any of the political reporting until those counts are done. And that is going to delay the count of the election in Georgia days, weeks, months, something completely fucking insane. So if we don't need Georgia and, you know, we, we might not, you know, Democrats are in play in a lot of states right now, uh, then it's possible that we can call it on election night or a couple of days after because, you know, mail-in voting and absentee ballots are still a thing. So, you know, that might be, that might continue to be something where we're going to be counting ballots until a couple of days afterwards, like in 2020. Um, but yeah, we might be able to call it on election night, depending on, uh, you know, depending on how close the race is. But every political analyst is saying that this is one of the closest political races that they've ever seen. And so, you know, count on this being 50-50, count on this being a long and arduous uh, process. All right. Jerry Ford, do you believe the Democratic Party needs to be held responsible for genocide in Gaza and Lebanon? Hmm. You know, that's a difficult question because I do believe that the Democratic Party supporting, continuing to support Israel, despite the fact that they're doing war crimes, is a bad thing that they have done. Now, I do not believe that that is the Democratic Party that has done that. I believe that the White House, which is currently being run by a Democrat, Joe Biden, is partially responsible for that. But, um, you know, this is a policy that Republicans hold as well. So I think just the fact that we were holding the potato at the time that the 
October 7th happen, you know, it just means that the responsibility fell to us and guarantee you that if a Republican takes office in 2025 instead of a Democrat, that the support for Israel will accelerate and will not abate even in one little bit. But yeah, I'm not really sure what the consequences are for violating the Leahy law, which says that we are not allowed to give support to countries that are doing genocides and, uh, and war crimes and shit like that. I, I should mention, just for legal reasons, that uh, there has not been a consensus on whether what is going on uh, with Israel is a genocide, but there is pretty clear consensus that it is war crimes at the very least. Trump fate, is it an ankle bracelet or three hots and a cot? I don't know what hots is. Three hots and a Oh, three hot meals. Got it. Uh, if Trump loses the election, I think that it is very likely that he is going to jail. He did too many crimes. He obviously did too many crimes. There's lots of crimes that he did out in the open. Uh, and it's not he's not going to jail because Democrats have weaponized the Justice Department. He's doing he, he's going to jail because he did a lot of crimes and he did them out in the open. And there's a lot of evidence that he did crimes. Bad ones, too. So, yeah, I think he's he's going to jail if he loses this election. Uh, he'll, he'll probably try to leave the country. That is my number one guess for what happens to Trump if he if he loses this election. Abundo, if Trump is so big corporations, why do they all endorse Kamala Harris? They don't all endorse Kamala Harris, and most billionaires do not support Democrats. Uh, the Prophet, why should a Christian vote for Kamala? Well, it depends on what kind of Christian you are. If you are a you know, Christian nationalist who believes that everybody in this country should be a Christian and that we should be living under Christ's laws uh, before we live under the Constitution, then, you know, uh, I do not believe that Kamala is going to follow those policies. But if you if you are a Christ-like Christian and you believe in feeding the hungry and uh, giving shelter to the homeless and giving health care to the sick and taking care of do unto others as you would have them do unto you, uh, there but for the grace of God go I. If you're that kind of Christian, well, then those are the policies that the Democratic Party adheres to. So yeah, you should vote for Democrats then. Uh, D. Duran, what are your thoughts on APAC and its influence on our political process? I'm against it. APAC has shown itself to be an extreme right-wing organization for a long time. If uh, anti-Semitism and Jewish issues are something that you care about, there is another organization called J Street, that also protects uh, Jewish people and fights anti-Semitism, but does it in a way that is progressive as opposed to being authoritarian. I think that it is extremely ironic every time I see uh, powerful Jewish people who are supporting uh, you know, the Republican Party, which has intimate ties to fascism and fascist ideologies, it is as though they're saying they forgot the poem. You know, they forgot the first they came for the blanks and, the, and, I did, and yet I did nothing poem. Uh, you know, I don't know, we're, we're not so far away from the Holocaust that we can forget what that feels like. So, you know, I find it a little hypocritical on their part. Uh, parties by me, which homeless do we give shelter to? None here in Houston. I don't know what you mean by that. Which homeless do we give shelter to? Give shelter to all of them because it's terrible being homeless. It's very, you know, it's not good for the people who are homeless and it's not good for the people who have homes that live near the homeless people. Uh, Guy G, tell us what your thoughts are on Hannibal Lecter because Trump talks about him a lot in the rallies. I think we've discovered that um, uh, the reason why he was bringing up Hannibal Lecter is because he was talking about asylum seekers and he thought that asylum seekers meant people that had left an insane asylum. Uh, no, MAID is the program for assisted unaliving. Oh, Amberly, I'm so sorry. I completely misread that as Medicare or Medicaid. Um, assisted unaliving. You know, I personally don't have an issue with uh, euthanasia and, you know, voluntary euthanasia. Um, that It might be a controversial thing to say, but I, I feel like, you know, if we are going to respect the individual decisions of citizens to, you know, uh, decide what they want to do for their health care, I feel like that should extend to whether their life has become so terrible that uh, it just makes more sense to to uh, go through a euthanasia process. But, you know, um, I have not heard a substantive argument against it. I've only heard religious arguments against it. So, you know, um, if that is something that you're considering, I, I guess, you know, my instinct is to still tell you, tell you not to do it. You know, it feels like that's just something innate in all of us humans to just try to make it so that people don't do that because we, we just all feel like it's such a, you know, we, 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 we are so confident that there are people that care about you in your life that would, that would miss you and that would be devastated by that. So, 
So yeah, I can't speak to your specific uh, to your specific issue, unfortunately. But you know, uh, as far as like a policy issue, I think that it's um, it's an open debate, and I'm open to it. I don't have a a strong opinion on on uh, either side of it. I'm open, you know. But yeah, I hope you're doing okay. That really that makes me it makes me sad that you're going through that. Um, uh, either side of it, I'm open, you know. But yeah, I hope you're doing okay. That really that makes me it makes me sad that you're going through that. Um, all right, I'm back. I think I'm back. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I'm going to have a little trouble getting back from that, guys. Honestly, it really, I don't know. All right, just going to gonna plow forward. And, uh, you know, again, I hope that you're doing okay, uh, Amberly. I really hope you're doing okay. Uh, thoughts on the Green Party? I don't really have a lot of faith in the Green Party. They have not tried to build up any kind of local and state support. Uh, they just, they have Jill Stein leading the way and she was a spoiler candidate in 2016. She seems intent on continuing to be a spoiler candidate. She seems as though she's beholden to Russia based on what I have seen her say in interviews and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, you know, I don't rate them. It's the Green Party. So you would think that people on the left would be in support, but their, their actions don't really match their, their platform. Brian Barr, 950, why do a majority of people use Kamala Harris's first name? I actually saw a video about this, about how we tend to do this for notable women instead of notable men. And, you know, I'm amenable to that argument. I will say that we tend to do that with people with interesting names. You know, like if you say Harris, there's a lot of Harrises that it could be. But if you say Kamala, we know that it's Kamala Harris. Um, and, you know, if you say Hillary, you know which Clinton you're talking about. But if you just say Clinton, you could be talking about Bill. Uh, but yeah, I, I try to go back and forth because, again, I saw that video and I, I always try to be part of the solution as opposed to part of the problem. So, but yeah, I'm not going to call out anybody for, for saying Kamala because, again, she has a very fun first name. Uh, we do the same thing with uh, Barack as well. But I mean, you could just make the same argument that because he's a, he is a uh, black man that that is the same, I don't know, devaluing of using their first name or lack of respect or something. But, uh, you know, like I said, I'm not married to it. But I do, I, I do go back, back and forth because I'm trying to be fair, trying to be part of the solution. Uh, actually, most of the Forbes top 100 are for Harris. That, <laughs> that's not what I said. I didn't say the top Forbes top 100. I said most billionaires. Uh, but yeah, if there are people in the top uh, Forbes top 100 are for Harris, here are a couple of guesses. Uh, maybe it's because they have a moral foundation and realize that Trump is a psychopath who likes to hurt people. Uh, maybe it was because they care about their fortunes, and they want to protect it, and they are listening to Goldman Sachs and 60 Nobel Prize winning economists who've said that Harris's economic plan is better than Trump's economic plan. Diagnosed genius, do you support Palestine or Israel? I support the people of both of those nations, and I am against the governing bodies of both of those nations. I think that both the right-wing government of Israel and Hamas have done war crimes, and they should both be held accountable, and I do not care for the fact that both of those uh, governing bodies are seem to be fine with indiscriminately killing innocent civilians on either side. All right, Brother Orwell, why don't the Democrats talk about chronic illness in the United States, and why is it twice... Um, well, uh, chronic illness does not seem to be one of the main target issues that is going to move the electorate. And at the moment, we are in a, a fight with the Republican Party that represents an existential threat to a lot of people in this country. And some argue the foundation of the country itself. And so I believe that their uh, priority is in addressing the issues that are most front of mind for Americans. But if you're looking for a party that cares more about the health and well-being of the citizens, like look to the party that is trying to stop companies from poisoning your food, air, water, and medicine. Look to the party that is the only ones moving towards uh, universal health care and universal basic income. Uh, Igzemia Leal, Hummus is punching up. The IDF is wiping house. Uh, they are much different sides. Um, I mean, if you're talking about the H terrorist organization, uh, you know, I, I don't know if, if taking civilians hostage and murdering civilians counts as punching up. Um, you know, I, I will not shy away from criticizing the right wing, extreme right wing Israeli government led by extreme right wing Netanyahu, but I am also not going to advocate for Hamas, which has, has also done atrocities, even if Israel is you know, the more powerful party, and I believe it is their responsibility then to be the calming force in this, uh, you know, in this, in this war between them and Hamas. 
So yeah, uh, and and we're the that's the only side that we are currently funding. So a lot of my criticism goes to Israel and to America funding Israel uh, in this war. But yeah, Hamas is not blameless. They are they are guilty as well, largely largely guilty, uh, bigly guilty. Uh, parties by me. So do you think the Democratic Party has no flaws? No, they definitely don't have flaws. I've said this on a different live also, but I guess the point is that the flaw of the Democratic Party isn't their platform. The platform of the Democratic Party is a bunch of very good policy ideas that would help a lot of people in the country, and the platform of the Republican Party is the opposite. It is a bad platform that would not help a lot of people in the country. It would only help rich people, giant corporations, white people, etc. So yeah, that is why I, I... Uh, You know, I talk about the benefits of the Democratic Party and talk about the dangers of the Republican Party so hard. Uh, Let's see here. RFK was running on the platform and now Trump is getting on it too. I mean, first of all, RFK is a liar and a spoiler candidate. He's a fraud. Uh, Same thing with Donald Trump. If they they believe that this is a good issue for anti-vaxxers, they believe that the anti-vax coalition will be behind them and will vote for them because of this. But again, they're liars. They're frauds. I wouldn't. I don't trust them as far as I can throw either of them. Carlos Perez, you think FDR would have passed UBI during his time? Uh, yeah, you know, he was trying to get the second Bill of Rights passed, which included things like the right to housing and the right to a, you know, a good paying job and things like that. So, yeah, I mean, uh, FDR represented one of the more progressive administrations that we've had in this country. So, yeah, I definitely wouldn't put it past him at all. Casey John, universal health care equals expensive bad care. Uh, no. It's cheaper than what we currently have. And every other country in the world does it and gets a better out, better health outcomes than we do here in this country. So I guess you can miss me with that shit. Uh, Casey Sama, uh, if we have the technology and the medicine made, why not use it? Because capitalism, because of the profit motive, you know. Now Biden is sending more money to Ukraine. You know, uh, I believe that we should be supporting them in this fight. So, you know, I do not think that is not the own that you think it is, uh, my friend. Here is a flood that the Democrats have. They don't fight back hard enough against the Republican lies. Yep, uh, no arguments there. You know, I am, I am an aggressive progressive, and I, and I like to vote for other aggressive progressives. Uh, parties by me. Hmm, I am neither, and I find a lot of flaws uh, with both. I find that the flaws of the Republican Party far outweigh the flaws of the Democratic Party, but if that's not how you feel, parties by me, I'm interested in hearing your your uh, rationalization for that. So go ahead and put that in the comments. I'll look for it. Uh, Amberly, do you believe in the two-party system? Personally, I think it's getting more and more flawed with time. You know, I don't think that there's any inherent value to the two-party system, and I think that there are flaws with it. But I think that people generally tend to exaggerate how many problems are just directly related to the fact that we only have these two main political parties in our country when... I think it is more to blame. I think the, our general electoral system is to blame. That gives Republicans an advantage. I think that the extremism of the Republican Party is way more to blame for that. You know, um, I think money in politics is way more to blame for that, for those problems. Uh, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not in love with the two-party systems. I'm not in love with, uh, with either of the political parties. I just, I just like one a lot better, and I hate one a lot more. John, I respect your opinion. You at least have some substance to your arguments. Thank you, John. I appreciate that. Uh, Lori Hurst Ford, do you think Republicans and MAGA should part ways? I know Dems uh, would like better competition. You know, I don't know how we se- separate Republicans from MAGA at this point. They seem pretty pretty well, I'm going to use this word again, inculcated into, into the Republican Party. And, you know, people have asked me, like, what happens if Democrats uh, win this this next election. You know, is this going to hurt the Republican Party so much that they finally get rid of Trump and get rid of Trumpism? And I, honestly, I don't know. I don't know if that's the case. You know, it seems like they're really doing well, just playing to their base. And even when you lose the uh, unique figure of Donald Trump, like I don't know if we have any other Republicans that are going to be as popular as he is, even if they lose him. There are people in this country who just vote for the R. Like, there are people in this country who hate Donald Trump, but they just vote for the R next to his name. And because Republicans have an electoral advantage in this country with the Senate map, with the Electoral College, and with gerrymandering, uh, I don't think that they're incentivized to change at all. They can be a split party, Republicans, centrist Republicans, and MAGA, and, and lose the political talents of Donald Trump uh, which I am extremely critical of, you know, people talk, describing him as like a savant or anything. Uh, but yeah, I don't think they change. I really don't think they change until we change electoral, the electoral, po- uh, 
unless we change the electoral politics in this country, I don't think the Republican Party changes at all. Uh, Casey Johnson, do you think DeSantis would be up double digits on Kamala? I don't. Like, he was so awkward and weird during the primary, and he's so much more, he's so much more outwardly extreme than Trump on abortion. Like, it seems like abortion... Trump is pro-abortion in that it helps him politically, but it seems that DeSantis is like, you know, lost in the sauce of it. And he was trying to 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 gain popularity by moving to the right of Donald Trump. And I don't think that you can wash that away. You know, like him, Donald Trump extremism is not what people liked in this country. Uh, let's see here. Amberly, what would the perfect president entail for you? Um, you know, it's all just, it's about policy for me. You know, I like you know, responsible presidents. Uh, I like presidents who, um, you know, have who have the gift of good oration the way that Obama had. I mean, we can't expect all of our politicians to be as good at public speaking as Obama was. He really was a singular political talent that, uh, you know, generational. You know, we don't really, we don't see that every single day. Um, but yeah, but that's not necessary. Like, I'll take an awkward person who can't talk straight if they're just going to do the work, you know, if they're going to get the job done. Uh, you know, responsible, trustworthy, those are great. But it really is all about policy for me, you know, like uh, climate change, uh, income inequality, uh, you know, uh, responsible government, uh, soft uh, power. Uh, you know, what's the opposite of war where you actually talk to people? You know, <laughs> diplomacy. That's the word I was looking for. Thank you very much. Rhonda Rowden Kirwan. I think you were here yesterday, Rhonda. Uh, can you talk about what you think about tariffs? Uh, yeah, you know, tariffs. They're supposed to have the benefit of increasing uh, local production so that we're not getting as many goods from other countries uh, and we're making more things here, which is good for the working class here. Uh, the thing is that for the past, I don't know, 20, 30 years or something, we've been moving ag against tariffs as we've been living in more of a globalized economy. And some of that stuff is good, you know, like it's really great to get goods from other countries and experience their culture and stuff like that. But some of that is bad in that, you know, uh, companies are offshoring their operations so that they can make goods for cheaper and make a ton more money. And they are exploiting countries that don't have as good labor protections as we do here and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah. So, but, you know, regardless, regardless of whether or not globalization is a good thing or a bad thing, uh, tariffs were going away. They were becoming less and less as we were having better and better trade agreements with other countries but then Trump decided to start trade wars with countries like China, and then that increased the, the cost of goods. Because even if we're not getting certain goods from China, there are certain goods that we make here that need components that we get from China. And so those goods were going up in cost as well. And other countries don't pay those tariffs. We pay those tariffs. Because if Best Buy is going to buy a computer from China, they're going to have to pay the tariff, and then they're going to move that cost onto the consumer. Uh, so yeah, I don't believe that tariffs is a great tool for... Uh, encouraging, you know, uh, local production. Uh, I think that, you know, we have other incentives that we can use, like the Chips and Science Act was great for increasing production here in America and did a lot to bring jobs to this country, good jobs to this country. Uh, the, the, you know, Inflation Reduction Act did a lot of that as well. Um, so, yeah, I think, you know, they're a blunt instrument. If they, you know, it, it's like trying to use a, you know, a, a hammer to cut your nails. You know, it's a... Uh, it's sloppy, and it, and there's a lot of damage, a lot of residual damage. Uh, Blake, why should I vote for the genocide Joe and his administration? Uh, well, Blake, if if stopping Israel from doing war crimes is something that you care about, then you should be voting for the only political party that is amenable to standing up to Israel, and that is the Democratic Party. The Republican Party does not give a shit. They don't care what Israel does. They're going to give them as much money and weapons as they fucking want, and they're not going to say boo if they just nuke Gaza. Lindsey Graham even suggested that they nuke Gaza. So... You know, I will vote for the lesser of two evils. I am not ashamed to say that. I think that the saying that you don't want to vote for the lesser of two evils, I think is a flawed argument because it's like, so you're letting, so you're going to vote for either the greater of two evils or you're not going to vote against the greater of two evils. Uh, the Harris administration has said that they're going to be harder on Israel than the Biden administration was. And the Biden administration is stronger on Israel than the Trump administration would be. So ergo, the Harris administration would then be leagues better than uh, the... The, Trump, the potential Trump administration. Uh, Dank Sith. Dope 
screen name. Uh, and remind me who has barely said any policy. Uh, Trump. Trump almost never talks about policy, whereas Kamala talks about it all the time, and she's got it all up on her website. Rhonda Rowden Kirwan. So are the tariffs a big reason for our inflation? Um, no, I think uh, the biggest cause of inflation is corporate greed. Economists have studied this, and uh, these these CEOs have admitted it on their investor calls. Uh, they raised prices and tried to disguise it as inflation. Hey, I got another team member. Awesome. Uh, now, what caused the original inflation? That was supply chain fuck-ups and the war in Ukraine. Uh, and all of that was basically started by the Trump administration. Uh, but yeah, uh, the Biden administration has gotten inflation back down to where it was pre-COVID. Prices are still high because these corporations have not, you know, changed track. But Harris is talking about going after price gouging corporations. And so that's another reason why you should vote for Democrats. Uh, Steve Merritt, wouldn't Trump calling BB a kill to kill a ceasefire be treason? Uh, I mean, I think so, <laughs> but I don't know if a lawyer would think so. Shields Group says it's all over his website and has been. Yeah, but he doesn't talk about policy. All he does is goes up there and he rants about, you know, fucking sharks in the water and, <laughs> and Hannibal Lecter. Julie, regular citizens cannot deal with other world leaders. I know, that, I know that that's legally the case, but, you know, the thing about Trump is he's really good at the gangster thing. I don't say gangster, I mean the mob thing, you know, where it's like you try to say you know, take care of him instead of murder him. And you try to say, go pay him a visit instead of murder him and stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, and it's, it's part of the reason why they still argue that Trump didn't incite January 6th and that he doesn't incite violence is because he never, they never, well, he didn't say exactly that. He always says, like, the dog whistle or the thing that, like, hints at the thing. So, yeah, I am I'm curious if they have enough evidence to try him on that, but... You know, I, I I don't know for a fact that that is something that he could be legally liable for. Let's see here. What are the differences between Biden and Harris's economic plans? I'm not really sure. Uh, she hasn't been running on that distinction. She hasn't been running on that distinction. You know, I'm going to do this different than Biden. So much has been laying out like her agenda and letting people sort of like compare and trust uh, as it were. I will say that, you know, uh, I feel like she's just going to be a little bit more aggressive on the policy side because she is younger and she's got a little bit more gas in the tank uh, than, uh, than Donald Trump, than, than, than both Trump and Biden have. Uh, Trump says all Americans wanted Roe versus Wade overturned. Your thoughts? He's lying, he's lying, he always lies about stuff. He's full of shit. He always, everybody wanted Roe versus Wade overturned. Not true, not true. A very specific group of people wanted Roe versus Wade overturned, but most of us did not. IDK, liberals murdering their babies is a win-win. Well, IDK, uh, Trump's abortion bans have already cost two women their lives, and infant and maternal mortality are skyrocketing in Texas. So there you go, buddy. Juris, thoughts on RFK if he was still a frontrunner? I don't know that RFK ever was a frontrunner. He was doing better than a lot of other third-party third candidates had polled in the past, but he 100% was never going to win the election, and he, uh, you know, was never going to be more popular than... Uh, Harris or Trump. I mean, maybe Biden because Biden did really bad in the debate, but uh, yeah, uh, I will say this, that the two main third-party candidates that have popped up in recent memory, RFK and Jill Stein, uh, I am, there's a lot of evidence that they're full of shit and that their intention is to be spoiler candidates. Uh, they have very suspicious funding RFK was funded by the exact same main billionaire donor as Donald Trump. Uh, Jill Stein uh, has spent a lot of time in Russia and seems very keen on not saying anything negative about Vladimir Putin. And I find that stuff very suspicious. I find it very suspicious that Jill Stein and the Green Party don't run for local and state office before they do these moonshot ego trips for presidency every four years. Uh, I think it's really weird. I think it's really weird that I can watch a podcast that RFK is on, and even though I am not a doctor or a scientist, I can listen to the things he's saying, and like, I know that's bullshit, I know that's a lie, and I know that he knows that's a lie as well. Uh, I would also refer you guys to the Mehdi Hassan interview between him and Jill Stein, where he said, is Netanyahu a war criminal? And she said yes, and he then said, is Vladimir Putin a war criminal? And Jill Stein said, well, I guess... If, I mean, he, and then she would not say, she would not say on television that Vladimir Putin was a war criminal. So, awfully suspicious, I think. Awfully suspicious. 
Uh, so yeah, thank you again, uh, everybody. Well, what does Juris say here? I don't like that other candidates avoid including health in their policy portfolios, unlike RFK. Health is a it is a big part of the uh, Democratic Party's platform. I would uh, advise you to go check out Kamala Harris's website uh, and see here. Thanks again, everybody. I will see you next week. Have a great weekend. Uh, and I don't forget to vote. And make sure you register to vote. Talk to your friends and family about voting, everybody. Goodbye. Take care. Goodbye. 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 Goodbye.